Hi, folks. Thanks for joining. Um, welcome to this new session of uh, Azure Power Lunch. Uh, today's session is about Azure Communication Services. This uh, call is recorded and the recording will be placed on a YouTube channel. If you don't want to be recorded, please go ahead and drop now. With that, let's get started. So I have a, uh, a presentation here. Like, I'm not going to train the slides. I'll go quickly through them and then I'll show you a demo of the Azure Communication Services. If you have questions, please feel free to go off mute and, and, and ask. So let's get started. My name is Ala Tadmuri. I'm a cloud solutions architect. My focus is on enterprise architectures, uh, custom active or highly distributed workloads. So what is Azure Communication Services? A long story short, as you can see here, and, and uh, the, the more uh, like, uh, it enables you to, to uh, add audio and video communication to your solutions. Basically, in the, in the, in the short, uh, uh, long story short, it allows you to bring Teams, Microsoft Teams capabilities to your solutions. It's a modular, so there you could use uh, SMS or just the video and voice. You could use group chat, one of them or more of them. So that, that makes it makes the integration of the service easier on, on clients because it's modular, so you can use one or more or combination of those. So this it's built on the same uh, platform as Teams. It could scale uh, globally. It's built on a secure. It's built on Azure on top of Azure, so security was was built. Uh, in mind and baked in, so get all the benefits of, of the. Again, it's powered by Azure. It's an Azure service. I'm going to show you the creation of the service and in, in the Azure portal. So uh, get all the benefits that cloud gives you global availability, and trusted platform, and because it's modular, it's lightweight client integration. Uh, this case scenario. Uh, you could think probably the traditional uh, example is a, a website where you are uh, you could chat with the customer service. Uh, here you could uh, it's now popular that in, in almost every website you can see a bot that pops up and ask you if you need any information if it could help you pro provide you some like. Uh, entry point help, let's say. So you could imagine a scenario you are using a bot to uh, schedule an appointment with a technician. Uh, the bot automatically finds uh, who is available to take your call and arranges the call, and then you add the communication service to actually do the call with, with, with the person. I want to quickly go through the pricing. I think it's, it's uh, important when we take services into enterprise to uh, to look at the, the pricing. So this is built on Azure, of course. So it's it's as as most things in in Azure are consumption based. So uh, I'm not gonna go through like, the details here, but you could see a group call between three people uh, for 60 minutes. Some of them doing a screen share for I don't know 23 minutes, and then uh, Etc. But that 60 minutes call between three people uh, share, sharing some screen and then sharing uh, probably some file here or file number. Uh, yeah, it, it comes to like 0 0.6 uh, dollar. So I, I think it's very reasonably priced. And now demo. Before I go to the demo, anything on on these on on the slides? I know they are. Try. I, I, I would like uh, to focus on on the demo. I think it's more beneficial. But if you have questions, please feel free to ask on, on the information here. Otherwise, to the Azure portal, I created here a, a, a service already for us to use. But I'm going to show you the creation of the service. There is actually nothing special about it. But uh, 
and uh, when I attend demos, I like to see it even if it's like just simple uh, creation of a service. I still like to to see how it's created. So I'll, I'll, when I create a new service, I do search for communication services. I create one. Communication service RG sounds right. I'm gonna call this demo two. That's pretty much it. As you see, uh, many services in Azure they have many tabs for configuring the service. This one just as simple as this creating the service. It would take a few seconds. It would take us to the new service. I'm going to wait for this actually to finish because. OK, the, so uh, finished. So I'll show you the one that. Uh, let's let's go to the service actually first. Uh, let me highlight some of the things here. This is the keys where you would need these keys when you use the SDK programmatically to connect to the service and initiate the call. You would need the connection string. Uh, it's here where you would get that from, and the code samples online, they reference these keys, so it's here where you would get them. Phone numbers is here where you could add a phone number, so you could use the telephony, uh, telephony like, uh, system using regular phone numbers. You could purchase a phone number from here. You could integrate with push notifications, so you'd be able to send notifications to mobile phones. Uh, and I would imagine a lot to come here, this is a newly released service, so I would, I would imagine more integrations will be will be added. And with that, I'm gonna delete this one and, uh, and go back to the one that I created previously. And let me run the application. I'll show you the code that I wrote to initiate the call. But let's let's run the application first. See it. Uh, Believe would make going through the code more relevant. So it's a simple Java script application. I kept it really minimized it to 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 keep only what's essential. So here I could now put a phone call and I could initiate a call. Instead, there there is like a a shortcut or a trick, let's say, instead of using a phone call, you could you could use this format and this. Now, when I, I start start the call, this would actually call up a bot in the communication service, so uh, it would allow me to check if if everything is working uh, correctly. So now, when I I'll start the call, it will prompt me to record the message and it will play it back to me. If if we are able to hear the recording, then then uh, the Everything is uh, it's fine, and you would expect that if you have a phone number here, it would work the same. So I go ahead and start the call. I hope this works. Hello, welcome to Azure Communication Services Audio Testing System. Here. To test your call quality, record a short message after the beep. Then the message will be played back to you. Hello, recording a test message. This is 12, uh, 10 p.m. Hello, recording a test message. This is 12. Uh, then. Okay, so. If you're able to hear your own voice, then your audio configuration is correct. If you. Okay, so uh, that that proves or it shows uh, that that if you put a phone number here, uh, the code is able to to communicate back to the communication services and, and Azure and make the code. So now I go back and show you a little uh, what the code is doing. So the, really the simplest HTML as you saw, just a, a field and, and two buttons. And this is the code that's actually doing the code. Uh, and the hang up button is here. So 
uh, you initiate a call client here. And then that call client create a call agent and you set the properties on that this call agent dot pool and, and that's that's pretty much it really that this is the the, the code that allows you to create uh, a call or add add this capability to your solution and this is the simplest form possible of course but uh, you get the point this is abstracted so much complexity uh, out of your way, so uh, excited actually uh, to, to 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 do like you know play around with this uh, adding adding uh, uh, video and and voice capabilities to IoT devices was always uh, like something uh, of, of, of not not as easy as uh, could have been. So I'm very excited to plug these uh, code into IoT. Voices and, and uh, start uh, augment them with uh, audio and video capability. For for this code to to as you, you paid attention here, there is credentials. Each call when you create a call, you would need a token, and to create a token, there you need to call this identity client. Now, obviously, this is the connection string that I told you uh, about so when I run this this generate generates a token and I use this token here user access token I use that token in the JavaScript here so obviously you would want a trusted service endpoint uh, to issue these tokens, um, hard coding the connection string. This is obviously not something you want to do in real life. You would want to store the connection strings in, in some Azure Key Vault. Of course, you, you're not going to instantiate classes or uh, objects like this. You would want some dependency injection, but you get to the point. This is just a, a demo. Uh, I, I reduced it to the simplest just for us to see what it takes to add really. Uh, Cooling capabilities instead of focusing on the code. That's pretty much it. I'll go now that we have some time. I uh, this is the main page for uh, the Azure Communication Services. I usually like to show the architecture of, uh, of the solution, but in, in this case, really, like Microsoft abstracted this so well that it removed so much complexity. So the architecture, uh, let's go quickly through it. What, what we have seen here is, is this portion, oh, like the portion of the user and the web app, the one that the web app is, is uh, imagine this one here, the web app, the user. When I uh, clicked uh, goal here, it went, to the communication service. Actually, first there there is the token that I uh, I generated initially at the previous step. A real case scenario, you would probably want the user to uh, authenticate to issue a, a, a token to that user. But anyways, there's a token that's being issued, and then this web web app use that, uses that token to uh, communicate or talk back to the communication. Uh, that thing in, in Azure. Consumption based, so you could uh, issue, the, issue tokens and Azure takes care of the, the uh, scalability for you. So there isn't much to, to the architecture. One more thing probably worth looking at. This is the client libraries that are available. Currently, the languages that are supported. So, uh, I was using this package here, JavaScript package, but you could see that there is a .NET Java Python support. Uh, and of course, you could always use these uh, REST APIs directly without the SDK. You would be responsible for pointing the APIs and managing the tokens in this, but it's, it's an option for uh, for when uh, you don't have your 
language supported, let's say you could always use the REST APIs from any HTTP client. I'll stop here. Uh, let's open it for questions. If you have questions, Oh, hey, Ella, uh, just a quick question. This is Albert from Dallas, Texas. Um, does the ACS allow you to integrate with the any like any existing Cisco Avaya type PBX platforms besides, like, say, Teams servers, et cetera? I'm actually not sure. Uh, I could look into this and uh, feed me your name, please, on the on the chat here on the call. I'll come back to you on that. Sure, no worries. Thanks. Uh, sorry. Da. Anything else, guys? I think. I think I shown you the highlights. I think the best way to get started is, is these samples that, that are here is mostly where I uh, got the code from, but there are more advanced codes. I actually tried to simplify the code to, to uh, uh, but uh, there are more uh, advanced codes that are here. I'm going to share this slide with you and this uh, this is the main uh, URL that gets you to the to this page. So I encourage you to, to play with it. This is there. There is always uh, uh, a good use case for for adding uh, interactive, uh, whether it's SMS or call or video. So there's there's so many use cases for for this technology, and obviously, really a long waited. So if that's if there are no other questions, I'm not gonna. Hold you guys. I'll, I'll give you time back on a Friday. So uh, all right. So have a great day, guys. Uh, and stay uh, well and healthy. Have a great day. Thank you.